Welcome to our worship. It's the third Sunday of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. In the mysteries of life, God meets us. In the trying to make sense of what we don't understand, God meets us. In the sadness of our grief, God meets us. In the listening to his words, God meets us. In the sharing of a meal, God meets us. In the joy and the laughter, God meets us. Come, let us worship God, who meets us where we are. Come, let us worship Jesus, who knows and understands us. Come, let us worship the Spirit, who helps us in our need. The walk to Emmaus. On that day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking to each other about all the things that had happened. As they talked and discussed, Jesus himself drew near and walked along with them. They saw him, but somehow did not recognise him. Jesus said to them, what are you talking about to each other as you walk along? They stood still with sad faces. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have been happening there these last few days? What things? he asked. The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. This man was a prophet and was considered by God and by all the people to be powerful in everything he said and did. Our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and he was crucified. And we had hoped that he would be the one who was going to set Israel free. Besides all that, this is now the third day since it happened. Some of the women of our group surprised us. They went at dawn to the tomb, but could not find his body. They came back, saying they had seen a vision of angels, who told them that he is alive. Some of our group went to the tomb and found it exactly as the woman had said, but they did not see him. 
Then Jesus said to them, How foolish you are, how slow you are to believe everything the prophet said. Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? And Jesus explained to them what was said about himself in all the scriptures, beginning with the book of Moses and the writings of all the prophets. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they held him back, saying, Stay with us, the day is almost over and it is getting dark. So he went in to stay with them. He sat down to eat with them, took bread and said the blessing. Then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Wasn't it like a fire burning in us when he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They got up at once and went back to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven disciples gathered together with the others and saying, The Lord is risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. The two then explained to them what had happened on the road and how they had recognised the Lord when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The story of the walk to Emmaus is so rich, with so much to teach us. It's one that I think we can engage with in our imaginations. What must it have been like for those two disciples trudging back home? after the events of Good Friday and the end of all their dreams. Well, they already know something of what has happened since. They talk of the women's surprising story of the empty tomb and of angels saying that Jesus is alive. But they are desolate. They say, we had hoped but no more, it seems. So when Jesus turns up alongside them, it's not just or even that they have a bad memory for faces. Their frame of reference gives them no way at all in which they can possibly understand that it would be him. They are too crushed. All hope is gone. They don't ever hope again. They've been such fools. And yet, Jesus has come to them. He's been with them for a while. And he gives them what they need, as he did to Thomas. He walks with them, patiently, unrecognised. They do have the slightest of inklings, some residual interest, if you like. Stay with us, they urge him. So Jesus does. And then he breaks the bread and they know who he is. Looking back, it's so obvious Jesus was with them. Wasn't it like a fire burning in us when he talked to us on the road? I don't know how we could possibly have missed him. How could we have been so stupid? But they were so locked in their own disappointment, their hopelessness. They just had no way of beginning to imagine the possibility that Jesus might be alive. And now their situation, their lives are transformed. They go back to Jerusalem and they find that theirs is not an isolated experience. Jesus is alive and is at work in others too. Jesus is risen indeed. And he walks beside us. 
it's entirely possible that we don't recognise him. All sorts of things can prevent us from even imagining that he might be there. Disappointment, loss of hope, isolation from others, fear. But Jesus is still with us, patient, even good-humoured, looking at us with God's merciful eyes, ready to make himself known. However hopeless we might feel, there is always the next Emmaus encounter as we walk in the way. Stay with us, Lord. As we walked home at close of day, a stranger met us on our way. He heard us speak of one who'd gone, and when we stopped, he carried We come now to our prayers and as a background to our prayers we'll be looking at some of the displays done by members of our church to say thank you to the NHS and other key workers. Let's pray. In today's reading we thought about the sadness of Cleopas and his companion after the trauma they had experienced, the death of a friend the death of all their hopes. And so today we pray for those experiencing this same sadness, those who have been bereaved, those who are unwell or afraid, those who feel the loss of hope. Stay with us, Lord Jesus. In today's reading, we thought about Cleopas and his companion as they thought back on their experience of having been with Jesus and having their hope restored. Wasn't it like a fire burning within us, they said. We give thanks for all who are helping to restore hope. For Captain Tom and others giving inspiration and raising funds. 
and for those who are finding their faith deepened and renewed in these challenging times. Stay with us, Lord Jesus. In today's reading, we thought about the return journey of Cleopas and his companion. It was just as long as the outward journey, but it must have felt so much shorter because of their renewed sense of vision and purpose. We pray for all who are working for the NHS and in care homes, for all other key workers who are doing such important work. Give them a renewed sense of purpose. Help them to know how much they are valued and strengthen them, Lord, for the rest of their journey. Stay with us, Lord Jesus. Amen. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We are unable to break bread together physically at the moment, but as we have our next prayer, perhaps take some time to think about the people you know from church, especially any you think may be in particular need. Bring them before God, perhaps think about them especially as you have your next meal, and maybe give them a ring over the next day or two to check they're okay. As we break bread together, we remember a boy who gave away his lunch so that 5,000 could be fed. As we break bread together, we remember Martha and Mary opening their home to Jesus. As we break bread together, we remember Jesus blessing and sharing bread with his disciples, including the one who betrayed him. As we break bread together, we remember that supper in Emmaus, where Jesus revealed he was risen in the breaking of the bread. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you, today and always. Amen.